G'day guys, today we've got an ISO project for you to do at home. We're installing a set of LED work lights and reverse lights on the GQ Patrol. To do a job like this, you're only going to need a few little things. Uh, we've got switches, we've got relays, fuses, we've got lights, we've got wire, connections, tape, zip ties, a bit of heat shrink, and that's about it. Alright, so to start, we're going to be doing the reverse lights. So we're going to have them mounted here on the back. We're going to tap into the factory reverse lights using a relay so that we can then have the lights come on when I put the car into reverse. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we've got the connector here to the reverse light. We're gonna pull that out and test each connection when I put it in reverse to see which wire is live so that we know which one to tap into. All right, so pretty much what we're gonna to wanna to do here, make sure you got your negative lead from your uh, multimeter grounded and then just using the red prong, just check each one of the connections until you get a reading. All right, so we found our one, top middle. That's the one we're gonna do because it's reading currently 11.5 volts. So that'll be our wire. Safety first measure, before we start cutting any wires, we're just gonna take off the negative terminal to the battery so we don't go shocking ourselves or anything like that. We're gonna cut into that wire that we found to be the live wire for the reverse light. So just gonna use side cutters, you know, easy. And then get our strippers. One side done, other side done. All right, so I've just put the wire that we're gonna to run to the relay. I've just twisted it on to the wire from the live and we're just going to use these end-to-end -end connectors which are just like crimp to connect it and then we've got our wire running off of that. Yep, that's pretty good and then let's do the other side. All right and that should be connected so now that should be a live wire. All right so we're just going to chuck a shovel connector on this wire so we can put it onto our relay. All right that should be good. So yeah so this will go on to our either 86 or 85 connector, doesn't really matter. I know relays are pretty simple. It's pretty much all the way it works is, is like if you imagine a crossroad, and in order for this line, which is your power to say, in our case, your reverse lights to be active, this line needs to be active first. So it acts as an actuator to just allow current through the desired path, essentially. Uh, there is a diagram on top that explains it. So as you can see, with 86 and 85, if there's no power between these two or no connection or no complete circuit, then there'll be no connection between 30 and 87. So the next step to complete the circuit, we're gonna to have to run a ground wire from our relay to a ground. That's on. All right, so for the ground end, I'm just gonna use a little circle connector, I don't know what you call them, because we've got a ground point down here on the car, as you can see. So yeah, just chuck that on, and then that's just our connecting ground wire, because we're gonna have the relay mounted up in the back here. Facing where you want it. So there's our ground connected, and then from there, this will run up the back here. Oh, should I make that long enough? Nope. Oh, no. All right, so I just have to quickly extend this wire because I cut it a tad bit short. So that's why you measure twice and cut once. All right, finally. All right, so we've got the wires complete from the factory reverse light. So now we're gonna run our positive wire from the battery through an inline fuse, and then to the relay. All right, so we're gonna hook up the positive wire from the battery. Uh, so we're gonna run it from here, with an inline fuse, we're going to run it across the top of the engine bay, like this other red wire, and there's a grommet down here in the engine bay. We're going to feed it through there. That'll come out just at your feet, underneath the glove box. We then run that down under the trimming, and then there's a, um, a wire through hole in the floor here. We're going to run it through there, and then it's as simple as running it along where this existing conduit is, all the way back to the lights. All right, so I just got this 10 amp inline fuse. Um, so I've just put it on a... Um, circle little prong on the end so I can go straight to the battery and then fuse and then that's just running to the positive power wire which is then going to run all the way through the car and back to the lights or back to the relay. Uh, now it come off. All right. Done. All right so now that will run from there, behind there, underneath there. Uh, there's a hole and the wire. back there and then our lights will be mounted on that. All right, so we're gonna put the relay. I'm thinking, so I read, obviously the ideal place would be to have it in the engine bay, but you know, because of you gotta, you gotta run another wire sort of all the way back to then connect it up to it, I figured it'd just be easier with everything at the back here to just have it mounted in up behind this lip. So it'll be pretty well protected from the elements. I'll make sure I wrap all the connections in electrical tape or heat shrink and all that sort of stuff. So. It should be pretty safe up there. 
All we need to do next is run a wire from the relay to the lights, and then from the lights they'll be grounding wires. All right, so before we go running wires and stuff, I'm gonna mount the lights up just so I can get an idea of what sort of lengths of wire and that sort of thing I need. As for the lights themselves, they're just eBay special. Uh, five waters, I think, or something like that. Yeah, they're just meant to be like an LED flood. Uh, I sort of wanted flood as opposed to like flood and spot because I figure I don't need distance off the back. I just want sort of even light and the spot will probably be a bit blinding if I'm using them as work lights. So yeah, they should go all right. All right, so we've got the lights mounted up on the little brackets that they come with. We've had to use a different bolt because the original one was too small for the box that we've got here. So this is how they're gonna sort of mount up, just like so. Have them sitting on the back there facing out. And the idea behind that is that because I've got my spare tire and I need to still be able to take that out, they'll be on this, which is drop down. So they'll move out the way when we need to do stuff. All right, so there's our lights mounted up. It's pretty deadly to turn them on. For the two lights, I'm just gonna run them both obviously off the one positive wire, so I've just put the two into the shovel connector. Like so, and then you put that in, like so. All right, done. All right, so last bit for these lights is to run the earth for each light, so you just have an earth on each, just link them and then connect them in an earth point. So for the earths, for the lights, I didn't really want to put them on this little one just because, I don't know, it's sort of flimsy and a bit exposed and that and sort of looks bad. So uh, there's this little point back here, this old little bracket, which obviously I think was the old mount for the number plate and light, but we've since moved it. So I'm just sanding this up to make sure the surface has got a good contact and then we'll um, chuck this in and our earths can go onto it. Yep, that'll work. All right, then I just got to screw me ground in. We'll go to there like that. So before we tidy up all the wires, I just want to make sure it's working. So we're just going to test it out. I'm going to plug all the wires into the relay and then we're going to give it a test. So if you look on the back of the relay, it's got all different numbers. So you've got like 30 pin on the bottom, you've got 86 on the left, 85 on the right and 87 on top. And if you have a 5 pin, then you'll have 87A in the middle. So for us, our 30 pin, which is the bottom one, that's our main power source from the battery. So we're going to just plug that one onto there, like so. And then on the opposite end of that is our light uh, positive. So if we get the positive to our lights, which is this one here, put that on there like so. For 86, we put on the power wire from the factory light, which is gonna act as our actuator, as our signal to then open the other uh, circuit. So we're just gonna chuck that one on. And then finally, we have our ground for the lights. There you go, all right. All right, so now we're just gonna leave that there just for testing purposes. We're gonna go uh, reconnect the battery and then we'll turn her over and we'll see if it works. All right, chuck it in reverse. Ready? Yep. Doesn't work. No, the other lights come on, but the LEDs don't. All right, there's a problem. All right, so first we're gonna check, we're gonna check this to ground. So this to ground, make sure there's actually a signal there. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. So it's either a bad earth like if we go to a good earth, so grab hold that. Oh yeah, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you call. put the positive on there and I'll take this to a good earth. So instance the chassis. Oh, <laughs> that's just a bad earth on the car. You reckon? Yeah, because look, that's earthing. Um, what about like that? Try that there. Yeah, that's a good earth. So okay, we've had so on a back. Okay. All right. There you go. That's a problem. All right, so it turns out that the little bit down here, the yep. little one we put it on was so actually... It's a good idea I didn't want to do the lights off that, eh? It was a good idea you didn't want to do the lights off that. That is a bad earth. Alright, so as you saw there, we turned it on and the lights didn't work. So, you know, a bit of a bummer. But we did some testing, some troubleshooting, and we checked... We are going through checking all the power to the wires, and we realised that this earth is a bad earth. Okay, thank you. This should hopefully solve all of our problems. Give it a try. No lights. Can you put that on the earth? Yeah, so, okay, so that bit's fine. So that bit's working. So this is from the factory reverse light to make sure that it's And fine. we're getting a voltage, so yeah. it's... That's fine. Yep. That's we're fine. 11 volts. Yep, that's fine. Yeah, the only thing is that the relay might not be working. So if you put red to red, it'll work, right? Yeah. Yeah. So it's a relay yeah. issue. Yeah. I've got one more relay in my car I can try. Touch ground on the one opposite to mine. Yeah, you can hear the relay. One of the final. Yep, this one works. And then power goes into 30. And then 
things work. Yes! Finally! So it's a dodgy relay. Oh, yay! Reverse light! It works! Alright, so trial and error. We figured it out. Shit relay. So um, now it works. Next step is to mount the relay, clean up all the wiring, and then we might have lunch, and then we can come back and do the work lights. On? Yep. Awesome. awesome. Good work. Alright, cool. That's what we want. So this relay must be, because it didn't even click or anything. Yeah. This must, this is, that, that's, that's four drive super center at its finest. That is the <laughs> pinnacle of four drive super center. It's something that's never been used and it doesn't work. So, there you go. <laughs> As you can see, this isn't four drive super center, this is Bosch. That's why you pay more for products, because they actually work. <laughs> It'll do. That'll do, donkey. Yeah, that'll be pretty safe up there. Uh, I'm on it. Okay. One little one, and there you have it. That's a pretty clean job too, really. Doesn't yeah. Any different than the other lights. Hey. All right. So as you can see, we've got the lights working. Uh, we've cleaned up all the rest of it. We used just conduit and um, duct tape, zip ties to make sure it all looks nice and stays in place. So now we're gonna have a quick lunch break, and then we can get on to the work lights. All right. So just had lunch. We're back. Now, we're going to wire up the two rear facing work lights that are going to sit under the headboard. So the way we're going to do it is we're going to have, use a relay again, and essentially we're going to have this little switch in the mix as well, just a little rocker switch with an LED on it. We're pretty much going to wire it up just so, yeah, this switch turns the lights on and off. It's going to be off the secondary battery, so the car doesn't need to be running to um, use them. And so uh, it should be pretty easy, so get into it. <laughs> should be pretty easy. I hope so. <laughs> oh, make it look easy. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody hell, mate. Bloody hell, woman. Oh. <laughs> What's that from? Aaron Gox, the Simpsons thing. <laughs> Dope. <laughs> yes, that was funny. I said, <laughs> Homer. Mm, Homer. <laughs> what have you done now, Homer? <laughs> You've stuffed it up again. All right, so we've just got our inline fuse that's going to connect to our positive battery terminal. Now we've got it splitting, uh, this will run to the relay, to the 30 pin, and then off the other side of that will go to the lights. So that's like our main power for the lights. And then off the other split we have um, feeds into a double run wire which will run to the switch and the reason for that is that we need to run power to the switch but then also run it back to the relay. So by laying this double line we just lay one wire and we've got connections at both ends. So we'll do that now. Yeah, it's coming. Yeah, keep going, keep going, keep going. Going, down through there, behind yep. there, down through there, and then I might just run it right along the back. Right along the back, yeah. Back wall. Yeah, so, so yeah, just run it through the firewall, and then it's running around behind the seat, just on the floor. And then I've just got it, we're going to take the centre console out, which by the way, if you haven't noticed, I did uh, put in a single bucket seat and a centre console instead of the bench seat. So I took the bench seat out, um, got the seat and the console off a mate who was wrecking a patrol. And so yes, yeah, so we've got set console now, and it's uh, it's a lot more what's the word ergonomical, I suppose. So I guess you can say the switch is going to be put in here. Yeah. So I don't know which one to put it in yet. You got you got to fill them all. Yeah, eventually. <laughs> Pretty good to think like even Nissan, like they know people want to put in accessories, so they're like, oh, we'll make like universal switch spots. Like it's pretty good. Tight fit. Uh, there we go. So there it is, essentially. All right. So for the switch, we need um, a ground. So we don't really want to have to run a wire all the way back to the engine bay. So we try to. So we're looking for um, ground spots in the cab. So I've just got the multimeter here on um, 20 volts, and so I've got my positive to my positive, which is coming straight from the battery, and then just my negative. We should be able to test these points. So there you go. Yeah, we got 12.76 there. Uh, 12.76, 12.76, all right, so that's good. So that means any of these points we can use as a ground for our switch. So we can just take the screws out, put little circles on them and it should be sweet. All right, so this is the ground little um, wiring bit I've made up. So it's just got two ground shovel connections for the switch 
and then they just merge into one ground here and then this is just going to ground out down there on the cab. Alright so with the switch in place we can connect all of our wires. So we have our, start with the grounds, top, then we have our two positives and our return. Alright so now this next step what we want to do is sort of pull that bit of that excess through. Yeah, that's all right. Probably would have had to make it a tiny bit longer. Oh, that's all right. Now we'll get it to go. All right, so there's our ground. Yeah, lights up. We've got the switch in. We've got it all hooked up. And as you can see, that's in the off position. There's an LED. And then in the on position, that's two LEDs. So, um... It seems that no matter what, as long as the second battery is connected, this light will be on literally all the time. But it doesn't really like worry me because it's just one LED, so it shouldn't like it's a single diode, so it shouldn't draw like literally anything. We'll just leave it like that. And worst comes to worst, if I did want to disconnect that but still have the main light come on, I can just pull off the ground for that LED on the back of the switch. But we can do that at a later date if I feel the need to. All right, so I'm just going to chuck the shovel ends on these two cables so they can be plugged into the relay. Power is our 30. Nah. Not working? Nothing. Alright, ready? Yep, worked. Do it again? Yep, working. Alright, so um, we had a lot of issues there. We just couldn't get it to work for some reason, even though, I mean, we suspected it was a relay issue. We were trying to use this relay, relay it wasn't working. Then we tried another one that flicked before, but still couldn't work. And eventually we got a relay and it works. So we're getting power, so now we can run our, now we can hook our lights up and then we can run a positive wire from then back to this relay. All right, so before we get all the wires and that sorted for the lights, we're just gonna mount them up so we can see what sort of lengths we're working with. I might be able to get it to sit in these ones here. That's mint. The way the thing's shaped, it's like it's meant to mount to it. <laughs> and I love how it tucks in under the headboard. All right, so for the lights, obviously because they've got a positive and negative on them, we're gonna run uh, just wire that's got a, already a positive and negative or two wires in it, just because it'll be way easier. All right, so yeah, so essentially we're gonna have, obviously, positive and negatives connect. That'll run down uh, the headboard inside a channel and then meet up with this one, which is gonna have the same thing. Then they'll connect at the bottom and join into just one of these and then we run that back to the engine bay then connect the positive and connect the ground so it's all nice and neat. Blue. This is one good thing about having a tray. Well, I suppose you wouldn't be doing this if you don't have a tray. Alright, so that's connected. There we go. Like that. Oh, Liam, what's that sticker on your window? What's that? Oh! Oh, there, wow. In case you haven't heard already, we are selling Aussie Arvo's stickers. They're five bucks each, you can get them off the website, free postage all over Australia, so get around it. They're good. All right, I'm laughing. All right, so last sort of step, got our wire here from the lights, which will just run through the bung in the bottom of the car out to the engine bay. So pretty much positive wire, is going to go to the relay and then the uh, earth is we're just going to ground it here in the engine bay where the other uh, ground point is. Alright, so that goes on there like so. Alright, and then that wire. Da -da -da -da. The circuit is complete. Alright, Kowalski, time has come. Switch is lit up. On. Oh. Do you want to flick it? Give it a try. Yay, they work. Yeah, because they should work. There's no reason they shouldn't work. Yeah. Nice. Oh. Well done. All worth it. All right, so as you can see, everything is done. Just got to clean up the mess we've made and then um, we'll wait till it gets a little bit darker and we'll give these things a true test and we'll show you what it looks like.
So for the amount of money that it cost me and by well, the time, which I'm probably not the fastest person to do it, I'm really happy with the way these turned out. Um, I love the fact that these are hooked up to me reverse gear so that I, they just come on and I have to think about doing it. And just the extra light at, like when you're reversing and that would be amazing. Also too with the work lights, having these to be able to flood over the tray and surrounding areas would be mint. Like, and then the toolbox, when I open the toolbox up, that one will shine straight down into the toolbox. But yeah, so if you want to get yourself a set of lights like these, we're going to leave the link in the description below to the exact ones that I bought. Um, they're like 35 bucks or something like that, which I mean for four, four LED lights, I can't really complain. Like they look pretty strong and that, so yeah, they're, they're, I'm real happy with how it turned out. So if you enjoyed watching the video, give it a like. Uh, if you want to support us, you can grab an Aussie Arvo sticker at aussieavos.com.au. And yeah, we'll see you next Friday.